on, somebody. Hey, guys, there's freedom in this place, okay? You want to clap? But if you're going to clap, Clarissa, you got to clap. Oh, is that Bim? Okay. You got to clap with all your heart. Don't just clap once, okay? Praise the Lord. That's like scaring somebody, okay? That's what that clap is for. Praise the Lord. Uh, guys, my name is Jeff. I am the senior pastor here at Rockfish Church. If it's your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are so glad you're here. We know there's a lot of different places you could be on a Sunday morning, and the Lord sent you here, and we don't believe it's by accident. We are in a series. Thank you for that. Woo. That's my wife. <laughs> um, we are in our second week of this series entitled Rooted and Rising. Growing stronger in Christ is what it's really all about. And last week, we spoke about this. We, we said, there's no sense in faking it. And we talked about the seatbelt, right? The seatbelt laws that were passed. And, and we said, you know, that there's, there's no reason to buy what they call that safety T-shirt. It looked like a seatbelt that you were wearing, but it had no real value when it came time when you really needed it. When you were in an accident, the T-shirt did no good. And it's not, not about putting out a perception that you're a follower of Christ. It's actually being a follower of Christ. Now, I happen to be shopping for a, a bass guitar for the worship team. Don't tell them I said that, okay? But I was on Lazada.com. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, and so I'm on Lazada, and I'm searching for this bass guitar. And, and Ryan has the biggest smile right now. And I found a Fender Precision bass guitar, and it was 17,000 pesos. That sounds like a lot, right? But a brand new one cost 55,000. And I'm like, 17000 that's a little bit above budget, but I, I'm, I'm going to consider it. And I, I checked it out, and guess what it is? It's a fake. Now, we can buy a fake precision, Fender Precision, and we can get up here. It's not going to sound like a Fender Precision. What are we doing? Are we just there for the perception that we have a Fender Precision? Or do we want a Fender Precision? Come on, somebody. We're going to take up another offering? No, just joking. <laughs> My point is, there's no reason to fake. Faking does no good. Self-awareness, where you're at with the Lord, man, that, that will go a long way. And so today, we're going to pick up where we left off. And really... You know, this is all about the Great Commission. When it, when it all boils down to it, each and every person who calls himself a believer, a follower of Christ, we need to be part of this Great Commission to go and make disciples. And a lot of you will know that our, our, our mission statement, if you will, is make, oh, say it with me. Come on, somebody. Make, equip, and release. And the whole thing is we exist to make, equip, and release fully committed followers of Jesus. That, that's what we do. So we have a responsibility as individuals, and then we have a responsibility as a church. Individually, our responsibility is what? To make disciples. Each and every one of you has that responsibility. As a church, you know what our responsibility is? To make disciples. That's right. If a church is not making disciples, then the church has lost its central purpose. Come on. It's not about coming in here and singing songs, although worship was a whole nother level today. Come on, somebody. It's not about that. It's making disciples. Discipleship or disciple making really anchors the church to its mission, anchors, its, anchors the church to its, its purpose. And last week we also spoke about we need to be rooted before we endeavor big exploits. Before we do the work for God, you know what we need to do? we got to walk with God. Oh, come on. Before we focus on accomplishment, you know what we need to do? We need to focus on authenticity. We need to be real. Before we focus on, on competence, you know what we need to focus on? Character. Character matters. Before we have this call for readiness. It, you know, we always hear these things, these slogans. Are you guys battle ready? You guys ready to go? You already charged the gates of hell? 
Before we have the call for readiness, we need a call for rootedness. We need to be rooted in our faith. We need to be rooted in the word. And I'm all about advancing the kingdom. But before we advance the kingdom, we need to abide in the king. Oh, come on. And rather than be cause-centered, there's a lot of good causes out there. Rather than be cause-centered, we need to learn to be cross-centered. You know, at our morning rally this morning, we, we, we have a huddle. And, and Pastor Art, he reminds us, all this, all this is about Jesus. We need to be cross-centered. Come on. And here, here's this thing that was heavy on my heart. Before the doing, and I, I, I'm a doer. I, I admit that I'm more Martha than I am Mary. I, I just see stuff and I just I want to do it. My wife's more Mary. She, she's prayerful. But before the doing, we need to learn the simple task of simply being. You know what I mean? Before the doing, we need to be. So we, we need to be rooted and rising towards maturity. Now, I have a couple pictures for you this morning. Can I show you some pictures? This first one, this is my baby picture. Uh, do we have that up there? Yeah, that's not me. That's, <laughs> that's way too cute for me. Um, <laughs> but here's this cute baby eating. Praise the Lord. So cute, right? Who agrees this baby is so cute? So cute. Amen. Amen. Can I, can I tell you something that's not cute? Now, when we look at this baby, we say, yeah, cute. Oh, my goodness. You know, can I, can I show you a picture that's not cute? Ready? One, two, three. There it is. That is not cute. You see, when you're a baby, you expect to be fed. That's normal. It's cute. This, the, a man baby, a man baby is not normal, it's not cute, they ain't no fu it's funny to look at, but that's the only funny part about it. Here's the reality, when we're first saved, we're what we call baby Christians, just, just new in our faith, and being fed when we're baby Christians, that is normal, it's normal. But if you're staying a baby Christian for years and years and years, that's not normal. It's not right. At some point, you're going to need to learn to feed yourself. Oh, it got quiet in here for a second. Feeding yourself is a sign of maturity. It's a sign that you're growing in Christ. Have you ever heard someone say, so-and-so is a, is a mature Christian. Have you ever heard that? And think about it, what does that mean? But, but let's make it personal. If you were to leave here right now and say, my goal, Pastor Jeff, my goal is to be a more mature Christian, what would that look like? What would it look like? How would you do it? Let's start off with this. A strong Christian, a mature Christian, feeds themselves. You're not just coming here on Sundays to be fed. You're feeding yourselves every day. How many of you guys only eat on Sunday? Only John John, because he's been fasting, seeking the Lord. Come on, somebody. <laughs> a strong Christian, they feed themselves. They take ownership of their, their growth and their maturity. They don't wait for someone to spoon feed them. They take their walk seriously. They take their spiritual growth seriously. So that was the, the, the longest introduction to a sermon ever, ever, ever. But here, let's jump right in. If you're taking notes, here's the, here's the question. Why is spiritually feeding ourselves important? And we're going to turn to Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5, and we're going to start at verse 11. You guys ready? Is this on? Are you guys ready? Okay, all right, just making sure. It says here, we have a great deal to say about this, and it's 
difficult to explain since you have become too lazy to understand. Mm. Verse 12, although by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the basic principles of God's revelation again. You need milk, not solid food. Verse 13, now everyone who lives on milk is inexperienced with the message about righteousness because he is an infant. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. That was the verse 13. There it is. I'm going to read that again. Now, everyone who lives on milk is inexperienced with the message about righteousness because he is an infant. Let's go to verse 14. But solid food, there we go. But solid food is for the mature, for those whose senses have been trained to distinguish between good and evil. Can I tell you one of the problems with the world right now? I know there's a lot of problems with the world. But one of the problems, one of the main problems as far as we're concerned, as far as the Great Commission is concerned, is we have a many, I'll say many, many who call themselves followers of Christ, including church leaders, who actually aren't mature enough to distinguish between good and evil. Their definition of good and evil comes from something other than the Bible. Everything that we teach here, I pray, is out of this, out of the Word of God. We don't add to it. We don't take away. It's there. The definition between good and evil is right there. Some people, they get their definition from culture, not the Bible. And so often we, we look just like the world, right? Followers of Christ look just like the world. We view ourselves just like the world. We view the tough topics Tough topics, and we're going to talk about this in the next series, I believe it is. We view our sexuality like the world, not what the Bible says. And i got to tell you this, I would rather be biblically correct than politically correct. And we can take a lot of heat for it, man, but that's okay. It's not what I said, it's what the Bible says. And there's grace and there's love and there's absolutely no hate involved. It's all, it's all love, but truth in love. Amen? Amen. We, we, sometimes we view our addictions like the world. We compare ourselves to others and say, if they're doing it, it must be okay. If, if all these people are doing it, it must be okay. We, we view money like the world. So much of what we do is just like the world. And a huge problem is, is you can't often distinguish the Christians, the followers of Jesus, from the world, knowing the difference between good and evil. And I'm telling you, knowing the difference between good and evil is what makes us uniquely different than the world. But also this, it's not just knowing, it's being. Again, it's not acting, because there's doing but it's more about the being. Because we can do and we can put on this religiosity. We can put on this show. But if it's not real, you know what we're doing? We're buying a Chinese-made fake Fender jazz bass. That's what we're doing. And it does no good except for give the perception of realism when it's not. The goal for every one of us is, is to be Christians that can handle solid spiritual food. No more grown man baby Christians. Come on. So again, why should you feed yourself spiritually? Well, we must mature past the point where we seek God only when trouble comes. You know what I'm talking about? Some of you are students, and the only time you pray is when you're about to take a test. <laughs> Lord Jesus, I didn't study. 
I was on TikTok for 12 hours and fell asleep. Ah, Lord, help me. Right? That's your prayer life. That's what it consists of. We need to get past that point, just praying and speaking to our Heavenly Father in times of emergency. We get to that point where it's real and it's every day and it's all day. This is what Paul, the Apostle Paul, says about this type of Christian, this type of believer. This is Ephesians 4 and verse 14. It says, Then we will no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching. You stop right there. That means that there are people who every time they hear something new, they grab hold of it, even if it's not based in the Bible. We'll no longer be little children tossed by the waves and blown around by every wind of teaching, by human cunning, with cleverness. It doesn't matter how, how charismatic someone is, how influential someone is. It's not about that. We don't just believe them because who they are and the initials they have in front of their name or in back of their name. It's not about that. You ever notice... Kids will believe anything. Little kids will believe anything. Do you believe that? Can I tell you, when I was growing up, I never believed this, but my friends did, all right? The Easter Bunny. Do we have that here in the Philippines? The Easter Bunny. They would tell us that there was this, this big bunny going around hiding eggs in our yard. I'm like, What? I was five years, four years old. I'm like, how can there be a bunny walking around putting eggs in your yard? And why is a bunny doing it? It should be a chicken. Then we have this thing called the tooth fairy. Y'all know the tooth fairy? Come on. We get that tooth, we hide it under our pillow, and then somehow, someway, boom, we got a dollar. Well, back in my day, it was a quarter, 25 cents. <laughs> you can tell these kids, Easter Bunny, they'll believe you. Tooth Fairy, hide your tooth. Tooth Fairy's coming. They believe you. That's cute when you're young. But guess what? Imagine if you met an adult that believed anything that you told them. Just as you told the kid. The same thing you told the kid, you told the adult. But the adult believed it. You would think there's something seriously wrong with that adult. Every time he lost his tooth, he's sticking it under his pillow. Come on. <laughs> believing, that ev believing everything <laughs> is not okay. It's not okay. And we know this, but for some reason, we find it acceptable in our spiritual life. We hear these different teachings, and we grab onto it. Paul finishes this scripture this way in verse 15. He says, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head, the head. Christ. You see, God's truth leads us to maturity in, in, in every way, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, every aspect of our lives. God's truth leads us there. So the question is, how do you feed yourself? How do you feed yourself? So here's, here's something to write down. Oh, it's deep. It's deep because you know I'm a deep theologian. Number one, hearing the word of God. Hearing the word of God. I know it's super simple. Why? Actually, I'm pretty simple. Here's Romans 10. This is what it says. So faith comes from what is heard. Some of your Bibles say, and so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That's what I was raised up with. This is the NLT. So faith comes from what is heard 
And what is heard comes through the message about Christ. It comes from hearing the word of God. That's, that's how your faith is built up. And we need faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. There is power in hearing the word of God spoken, preached, discussed, read. This is why Christian community, Christian fellowship, man, that's why this is important. That's why coming to church is so important. That's why joining a small group is so important. I pray that some of you guys got a hold of that um, that QR code up there because we have small groups and they're not just for the sake of having a small group. It's for life transformation. It's for, for maturing in your walk. You ever notice that our enemy, the enemy of our souls, Satan, the devil, he wants to separate us from each other. He loves to isolate Did anybody here have a hard time getting to church today? Anybody? You can raise your hand. None of you had a tough time getting to church? Thank you, Alondra. I know some of y'all on the, on the team. Come on, y'all running in here up late. Thank you, my brother. Y'all got, to, y'all got to raise your hand from here to here. Come on, so I could see it. Come on. Yeah, come on. But why did you have a hard time coming today? The enemy wants to stop you from coming to church. Why? From hearing the word of God. And it's the word of God that brings change. You know what he'll also do? He will also try to bring offense. Yeah, so you won't come to church. Anybody ever been offended by someone at church? Oh, if they're next to you, don't raise your hand. Yeah, that's just wisdom. A lot of people, they get hurt. They get uh, offended. And you know what they do? You can do one of two things. You can go to that person. You can make it right. Discuss it. That's biblical, right? Or you can just leave the church. You can avoid the confrontation altogether. Just leave the church. Many people, unfortunately, will leave the church. And the enemy wins. That's one point for the devil. He, He just sent you away into isolation. And it's important, why? Because this can stop you from hearing the word. So your growth is stunted. So your faith grows a little bit weaker. So so what does this look like? What does this look like practically? One is this. Uh, Attend a church that preaches the Bible. The Bible. Not opinion, not politics. The Bible. I went to a church one time. Every, Every sermon at the end would turn into a political, like, opinion. Attend a church that preaches the Bible. Listen to sermons online, but understand who you're listening to. Okay? Understand. Because there's a lot of different points of view, and if you listen to so many different points of view, it'll lead to confusion. Any questions? See, see one of the pastors, Okay? But listen to sermons online. Listen to an audio Bible. You know they have those now. I learned so much driving around in my car listening to an audio Bible. Listening to sermons on, well, I'm going to show my age. They have these little things called cassette tapes. Come on, somebody. And you put it in your car. Okay, okay never mind. Here's, here's something. That if, you're, if you're an audible learner, there are scriptures that are put to music. Get hold of that. It'll get in your, in your system. It'll get in your spirit. How do we grow? What does it look like? You get into a small group. I'm telling you, in a small group, that's where life transformation happens. All right, let's go to number two. This is, this is number two. We need to meditate on God's word. Meditate on God's word. And I'm going to go to Psalm 14. Uh, 143, Psalm 143, verse 5, it says this. Remember the days of old. I I meditate on all you have done. I reflect on the work of your hands. Now, as soon as I I wrote that down there, meditate on God's word. Some of you guys went crazy on the inside. 
That's called a religious spirit, okay? Uh, cast that devil out. And uh, no, um, <laughs> joking, but I'm serious. Okay, <laughs> so, because um, as soon as I said meditate, you know what you thought about? You thought about someone sitting with their legs crossed and a home. Right? I'm not talking about that. All right, get that out of your mind. Meditation's in the Bible. All right, it's in the Bible. And so, what what do I mean about meditate on the Word, and how how does this lead to growth? This is how it leads to growth. A lot of us will read the Bible, but we read for speed. Someone told us. Someone coached us. Said, "Hey, you should read. You should read one one Proverbs every, every day." Or read a chapter of the Bible every day, start in the book of John. We get all these different thoughts, right? And we do it, but we read for speed. We don't read for understanding. We read through it and we said, check, did it, read the chapter. Praise the Lord. But we didn't understand anything about it. So don't rush through your scripture reading. Sometimes we, we just need to keep reading it over and over and over. And that's meditating on the word. Read it until it gets inside of you. You know, our culture is, is in such a hurry to move on to the be- next thing, the next big thing, the next exciting thing. Don't let your spiritual life be the same. So how do we grow into mature Christians? This is number three. Ready? It's big. It's deep. Obey God's word. You got to read it. You got to hear it. You got to meditate on it. But imagine, imagine this. I I might be stealing this from Francis Chan. I don't know who I stole it from. I steal from everyone, by the way. (laughs) So I can't help it, right? When you listen to it, it gets inside of you. Someone, maybe Francis, he said he shared this. He said, he said, imagine, imagine you telling your I'll talk to the parents real quick. Parents, you tell your child you need to go up there and you need to clean your room. You need to clean your bedroom. It's a mess. Do you understand me? Yes, sir. I'm gonna go clean my room. They go up there. Eight hours later, you go up there, open the door, look in their room, still a mess. I said, did you not hear what I said? Yes, sir, I heard what you said. And I have a bunch of people coming over later on this afternoon, and we're actually going to discuss it. We're going to talk about what it means to clean your room. And Papa, I also memorized it. Thus says Dad... Go upstairs and clean your room. They've memorized it. They're going to get a small group together. Discuss it. What's the missing element here? They didn't do it. So we can talk about it. We can meditate on it. But what about obeying what we just read? Obey what we just meditated upon are you doing it let's go to book of james the book of james chapter 1 verse 22 it says this be doers of the word and not hearers only deceiving yourselves because if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer he is like someone looking at his own face in a mirror for he looks at himself goes away And immediately forgets what kind of person he was. Verse 25 says, But the one who looks intently into the perfect law of freedom and perseveres in it and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer who works, this person will be blessed in what he does. Here's the reality. Many people like the idea of Jesus. They do, but not when it comes to changing their life. Oh, right? I, I, I love the music. I come to church. I love the music. I love my small group. What about changing your life? What about purging some stuff that shouldn't be there? 
What about even taking a baby step towards maturity? How about that? I'm going I'm to make a statement here, and maybe it's controversial. I don't know. I'm going to throw it out there. You don't get the full benefit of Jesus until you start obeying Jesus. And here's what I mean by that. Fullness comes in the following. You can be saved and remain a baby Christian for the rest of your life. The fullness comes in the following. So we need to get to the point where we're not asking what culture thinks about something. We're not asking our friends what they think about something. We're not putting this, this survey, this online poll on Facebook to see what everyone thinks. No. Instead, we're asking some, some deep questions. What does God's word say about this? What does God's word say about my current situation? What does God's word say about my habits? My thought life, oh. What does God's word say about me dating? Come on. You know what it says about me dating? Your wife will kill you. That's what the word says about me dating. Praise the Lord. What, is, what does the Bible say about money? What does the Bible say about friendships, relationships, huh? Remember this. Blessing follows obedience. Thank you for the amens. Praise the Lord. So this is my last point. This is number four. How do we grow into mature Christians? Share what you already know. Share what you already know. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, it says this, Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up as you are already doing. How far ahead of someone do you have to be in order to teach them and encourage them? Not, not much further. An eight-year-old can encourage a five-year-old. Someone who was saved last week can encourage someone who's not saved this week. Come on. Part of maturing is gaining that, that ability to share God's word with others, both Christian non-Christian. If you've been coming to Rockfish Church for more than like five minutes, you've heard us talk about the Great Commission. The Great Commission can be found in a couple different areas, but my favorite is Matthew 28, starting in verse 19. This is when he says, all authority has been given unto, has been given to me, and it's like he's deputizing his disciples at this point. This is Jesus. He says, therefore, because all authority has been given to him, Therefore, go, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Go and make disciples. It's a command given to all of us. Make, equip, release. It's all, it all goes back to this. Make disciples, equip disciples, release disciples. What does make mean? It means connect them, connect people vertically and horizontally. We need to connect them, connect, help connect people to God. We need to help people connect to a, a church that's going to uh, teach them the word, to, to develop them, to help them in their discipleship journey. Make, equip, what does that mean? That we're going to help them, whatever God's call on their life is, we always have micro and macro. Whatever they're called to do, we want to help them get there. Yesterday, we had eight young people go to a, a audio seminar. Why? Because we're serious about equipping everyone. What is God calling you to do? We're here to help you. There's a, there's a macro, what has God called you to do? But then there's a, also this little service-based orientation in there as well. Because 
we're a family. We're not just a church. We're, we're a church family, and everyone has their part. And so there's a role to play here. We want to equip you in, in your role here as well. And then the release part, what is that about? If you're called to go into all the nations, you know what we're going to do? We're not going to try to keep you here. We're not trying to build a rockfish kingdom. We're going to bless you and release you. There's many people that I'm, I'm mentoring right now. And guess what? They may never be a pastor at Rockfish Church. They might never be part of the staff at Rockfish Church. But you know what? That doesn't mean they don't have a calling somewhere else. And you know what we do? We hold them lightly. We thank God for the time that they spent with us. We thank God for the opportunity to sow into them for that season. And then we release them into their God calling. Amen. Anyone who ever comes to me and says, Pastor Jeff, I, I, I feel like I'm leaving, need to leave the church. You know what I do? I ask them this question. Is God telling you to do that? And if they tell me yes, hey, who am I? I'm just a man. We bless you and we release you. Just don't leave because you're offended. Come on, somebody. Don't, don't leave for some dumb reason. Go make disciples. The question is, are you doing that? Are you going? Are you making? Are you teaching all that you know? Pastor Jeff, I only know a little bit. Are you teaching the little bit? Mature Christians feed themselves. Amen? Share what you know. I'm going to invite you to stand and worship with us one last time. And then we'll see how the Holy Spirit wants to close this service up today.